In this video, we're going to look at another application problem where proportions might be helpful to us. So suppose you are trying to make a recipe that calls for three cups of flour and one and a third cup sugar. But you find that you only have two thirds cup sugar left. How much flour should you use in the recipe? So, um, so you know, you might even be able to look at these numbers and maybe even figure this out without a proportion, uh, just because the numbers are somewhat friendly. But um, whether you can or can't, let's make sure we set up a proportion here to understand in general how this would work. All right, so we have information about the recipe we were wanting to make and then information about uh, the, uh, the recipe we're going to have to make because we don't have enough sugar. Right, so first of all, what are they asking us to find here? How much flour should you use in the recipe, right? So X is going to be the amount of flour. So X cups flour. Okay. And then what do we know? Well, we know that three cups of flour uses one and a third cup sugar, right? So let's write that down. Those two numbers clearly go together. So three cups uh, flour, and that goes with one and a third cups sugar. So these two numbers are going together. And then we have X cups of flour is going to go with the amount of sugar that we actually have to work with, right? Which is two-thirds cups sugar. All right, so these two go together. So we understand that comparing the flour to the sugar in the recipe should equal comparing the amount of flour we actually use to the amount of sugar we actually use in the recipe. So we get this a nice proportion. Now we have this mixed number down here. And understand what we're ultimately going to be doing here. We're ultimately going to be multiplying and dividing by these numbers um, in order to figure out what x should be. So whenever we're working with mixed numbers we're always supposed to turn those into improper fractions when we, get, when we go to multiply or divide. So let's turn in fact everything into fractions. Since I have fractions down on the bottom, might as well turn my 3 into a fraction. So 3 over 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 is 4, so over 4 thirds equals x over 2 thirds. So now I can go ahead and take my cross product. Okay, and I'm running down a room down here, so I'm just going to let things follow over here. So this is going to be 3 over 1 times 2 over 3 is equal to 4 over 3 times x. And I can do some simplifying over here. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So this becomes 2 over 1 is equal to 4 thirds x. And since I'm multiplying x by a fraction, remember the best way to get x by itself is to multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of 4 thirds. So we'll multiply by the flip of 4 thirds, which is 3 fourths on the left, and we'll also multiply by that on the right. And so what that ends up giving me is just x surviving on the right side. And I can do a little bit of pre-reducing here. I can divide 4 by 2, and I can also divide 2 by 2. And so what that gives me is 3 over 2 on the left side, and then just x on the right. So x equals 3 halves. Now, um, the only thing we have left to do here, well, two things, of course, label. So remember, we were looking for cups of flour, so we understand this is three halves cups of flour, but you never talk about uh, you know, how much of something in terms of cups or, um, or pints or whatever. You never talk about measurements as improper fractions. You always want to give that type of answer as a mixed number. So we need to turn our three halves back into a mixed number to correctly state our answer, right? Of course, you can just do that by dividing the top by the bottom. 
2 goes into 3 once. I have a remainder of 1, so that means 3 halves is 1 and 1 half cups flour.